try and catch up uh, the ground that we've lost since, since 2010. Uh, and it's not just restoring those doctors, that will take time, it's not just restoring the, the, the hospital beds, but it's actually expanding the provision we have, so giving free dental checks, uh, free prescriptions, uh, free hospital parking, and, and returning to the principle of uh, an NHS that is free at the point of use um, for everyone. Uh, and people say we we are too ambitious and we've got too much money to spend. I, I say to people, we cannot afford not to invest in the most precious thing that we have in our country. And I think the pride of our public services is our country. Yeah, uh, and Nesha says absolutely the most important things in our world. And I, as I mentioned, I am uh, a, uh, a Nesha user. I'm a father of some years old, so therefore my, myself, my family, we all rely on the NHS services. And also here we guarantee that the NHS never on the, deal, on the, never on the table when people, people have the trade deal negotiation. And also we, because we, re, we realize NHS is the biggest uh, problem in our country, so therefore Conservative Party committed to invest in, uh, into the NHS by 34 billion pounds, which is the largest uh, investment since NHS uh, established. We also committed to increase 50,000 nurses and also uh, 6,000 more GPs. We can then create 50 million more appointments to our, to our people, hugely, hugely reduce the waiting list. And also bear in mind, people also remember there are many uh, migrant people come to this country and they are they also using our NHS. They currently only pay £400 per year, but, I, but after statistics, we realize they actually spend more than £600. Therefore, we now back to uh, back the uh, surcharge to £625. That will, that will uh, be implemented after the Brexit. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're past nine, so I'm going to go to uh, a final question from Stephen Pennells. You are here, I've seen you. Well, there you are, great. On your renewable energy question. Thank you very much. Is it the, um, the safeguards question? Yes. Okay. What safeguards would you support to ensure the development of renewable energy without exploiting people or destroying the environment in the global south. So could you could you repeat the question? I, yeah, I yeah. Quite get that. I think Nick Nomley's quite got it. Too. That's it there. Say it. Can you say it again, Steve? Sorry if I'm not clear. What? Sorry. What safeguards would you support? to ensure the development of renewable energy without exploiting people or destroying the environment in the global south. Um, first of all, we absolutely need to be investing in renewable energy um, and we owe this to ourselves and we also owe this to um, our citizens in uh, the global south because ultimately uh, we've seen the floods that have happened just down the road here and how that's affected people's livelihoods and that's scary for us um, but I am terrified for the people around the world um, who are going to suddenly see their homes become uninhabitable um, and so and during that time we've seen um, walls and fences put up across Europe um, and what has been made very clear um, by many of the political parties is that we are trying to reduce the amount of um, refugees and migrants that we're accepting into our country. Um, but we owe it to the world to accept the role that we've played um, in leading to this climate crisis and therefore we need to be uh, we need a more compassionate government and play a compassionate role in the world now where we will be supporting countries um, around the world um, to um, assist them in they will, even if we meet our targets of having carbon zero by 2030, there are many places in the world um, that will have irrevocable damage and that they will need support in order to be able to live with those changes or they will need to food self safety elsewhere. We either need to support them to do that or we need to accept um, refugees here, preferably both because we're going to need to do both. 
Um, so uh, that's how we'll protect that. Uh, we're going to be investing in renewables here um, to ensure that we uh, reach carbon um, zero by 2030. Uh, we're going to ensure that uh, all of the jobs that uh, come from that are well paid um, and good jobs. Um, so we're not exploiting people here. Um, and ultimately all of that will be good for everyone throughout the world. Um, I'm, I'm glad, as I said uh, last night, actually, that somebody uh, has mentioned the Global South because I think, as the Global North, we have a responsibility as the people who created the climate crisis um, to act to support the people who are most affected by the climate crisis, um, whether that be flood in Bangladesh or drought in Africa. Um, and yes, we absolutely have to do, do all the things, but I think we all talked about earlier on in terms of uh, our green policies and um, uh, cutting emissions and reducing climate change. Um, there are a couple of things that would also, I suppose, add, which may, I think, I think uh, maybe what Stephen's um, referring to. So, uh, at the moment, we, we, we give some aid that is supporting fossil fuel projects, and um, the Labour Party has said we shouldn't be doing that anymore, we should be rejecting trade that <coughs> we don't, um, that conflict with the climate principle. Uh, we should transform what's called the CDC, which is a, the, the Department of the International Development um, Investment, the private sector investment, into a green development bank um, that's actually mandated to fight um, poverty and climate change. Uh, and we should make sure that we don't deal with countries that are, um, and don't set up trade deals with countries that are involved in um, either um, uh, uh, human rights abuses or, or bribery or corruption, but are in, 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 engaged in damaging our um, environment. So I, I hope that's a little way towards um, answering Stephen's question. Um, we have to get our own house in order first, so I think we need to make sure that we, we get that path towards cutting our emissions to fulfil our responsibilities, our responsibilities to people in the global south. When I realised Stephen was asking the last question, I knew we were in for it. A uh, couple of things. Uh, I think one of one of the um, one of the achievements that we did uh, succeed with uh, in coalition was actually bringing the international development budget up to uh, up to the uh, the minimum that had been agreed internationally. Um, and while we need to go further, and we should be going further. Uh, we've committed to ensuring that a significantly bigger amount of money uh, goes towards tackling the climate emergency in um, uh, developing and undeve underdeveloped uh, countries. But I think we actually need to go a bit further. I remember a few years ago, and I think it was Guyana uh, was telling the, uh, in the, the international world that it couldn't protect its own rainforest and that it needed help to protect it. And I actually think that we need to look at uh, the assets that the world has and look at ways in which the developed world actually takes over the management and retention of that. We've seen around the world um, rainforests being cut down or burnt down. Um, and so everything that we're doing uh, to tackle the climate emergency is being undone by getting rid by in other parts of the world. Um, parts of our parts of parts of our biggest assets for tackling the climate emergency being uh, being wiped out. So I think it's it, it is it, it is important that we as the developed world actually start properly protecting the assets that we have around the world, whether it's the uh, whether it's the rainforests um, or what, whatever it might be in other parts of the world. We need to start being uh, putting resources into that rather than simply expecting underdeveloped countries to do it themselves. Okay. Uh, this is also a very good question. I think there are at least two layers to answer that. First one about renewable technology. I think to have a uh, effectively effic uh, efficiency and a, pro and a productive renewable, te renewable energy, we do need more investment. Allow the technology can catch up the can catch up the trend. Can in, can have high productivity, high efficiency to allow we can truly uh, reduce the carbon emission. 
And then secondly, when we mention this uh, Global South, I think we do <coughs> care about them as a country who, are the, uh, who, who, uh, who, who is one of the largest country uh, in the world. We do have such responsibility, look after the other part of the world to ensure their people live in the satisfied conditions. So therefore, we, we, we should try our best to help them. Uh, we, we do have different ways to help our refugees and also set up different aids to help the target, the, the target countries. But also we shouldn't uh, forget that the refugees may somehow have some uh, uh, unfor uh, unfortunate experience. Like a month ago we remembered there, are, uh, there were 39 uh, bodies being found in the truck when they crossed the border. Therefore we do need to tackle uh, those uh, human trafficking uh, groups. Uh, uh, we should work with global, uh, global countries together to tackle this to ensure people sh uh, uh, not have such critical situation uh, just because they want to change their living conditions. Uh, so, uh, so I think in the end, the investment in, the in, the in the investment in our technology is very important, and also set up the aid fund to help those target countries. Uh, is also very important. But, but beyond that, I think the key things is we do need a strong economy and how we can do uh, those things. Okay. Um, uh, thank you everyone for coming. So we've got through quite a number of uh, questions. It's now quarter past uh, nine. Um, so we're going to have a quick minute final statement from everybody. <coughs> And then we'll finish the formal part of the meeting. If people want to stay and chat, they're most welcome to. Um, we're not showing up shop, may even put the kettle on. And then, um, so, Lucy, would you go first? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so over the last uh, few decades, the Green Party has been working on and refining our policies that will create a better, more sustainable future that is going to deliver quality of life for everyone. While Labour were bailing out the bankers, whilst the Lib Dems were going into coalition with the Conservatives, and while the Conservatives were flashing our public services, we were banging the drum about climate change. And now we know that we have no time left. We have to act now. Only our policies are going to see the transformative changes that we need uh, to reach carbon zero soon enough and to stop climate chaos. Because of the reality of our voting system, our undemocratic electoral system, many people feel the need uh, to vote tactically. You don't need to do that here. Every single vote for the Green Party across the UK is a vote to remain, and it's a vote to take urgent action, urgent action on the climate chaos. Uh, the last an hour and a half we spent. Uh, we, we, the last, the last an hour and a half we talk about uh, various different topics, uh, more than ten topics. But there, there's only one topic about uh, Brexit. So therefore, you have you have to remind uh, you, are, you have to remind yourself that there are so many so many issues you are really caring about. So therefore, only get Brexit done that you can move on to think about your own issues, think about your own priorities. My policy. Uh, uh, for this election is really something about our NHS, our school, our policing, and also the investment in our infrastructures, as well as the climate, emo the climate emergency. So please do consider get Brexit done and move on to your own priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Labour has an ambitious plan for our future, and it's only that kind of ambition that is going to allow us to address the challenges we face, whether that's low productivity in the economy, the ageing population, or climate change. We believe in the power of society working together to deliver a better future. It's what Labour has always done, from founding the NHS to establishing the minimum wage. People say it couldn't be done, we've been told tonight our ambitious plan can't be done, and the Tories voted against it. But Labour delivered those things. Labour has delivered for working people down the years. And with your help and support, we'll do it again. It's time to invest in our communities and rebuild Britain. Thank you. Thank you. We've had a chaotic parliament over the last two years um, because 
the Labour Party and the Conservative Party stood on a platform of delivering Brexit and then talked about everything else in that election campaign and, and conned lots of people into thinking that uh, Labour were a Remain party. Uh, people can't make that same mistake again. This is the last chance to stop Brexit. The only party that can be trusted uh, to stop Brexit, to stop a Conservative party uh, from delivering a Brexit chaos, um, which will start a process that will go on for years and years, either uh, through negotiations, uh, over trade, uh, or a chaotic no deal. That can't be allowed to happen. So the more Liberal Democrats that get elected to Parliament, the better the chance that we can of having uh, an opportunity to stop Brexit within the next Parliament. So I'd like to thank you for coming, thank the candidates for coming. Um, as I said, this is the...